Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How is everyone? Good morning. We hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving and that everything was abundant and blessed and everyone felt the love of God. And um, we're so, so, so thankful. Yeah, that we get to come together and um, give God Thanksgiving as well. Hey, Abrahams. Um, so we are, we're thankful and um, we're blessed that you guys are all on. And we feel that God has a good message for today. Um, and we're going to go deeper. So power of gratitude, power of gratitude. So it doesn't seem like it's a power pack, but it really is. So we're going to um, go forth with that. And do you want me to pray or? Okay. So if you have your prayer language, feel free to join in. Um, but either way, open your heart and just come into um, a posture of uh, unity and love as we as we lift up our hearts to the Lord. So Lord, we just bless you. We thank you. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand, God, that there is no one like you, that you are truly all in all, that you are the line of the tribe of Judah, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the faithful and the true, the soon coming King. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, God. We worship you, God. We humble ourselves into your mighty hand, God. Your word says that God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, for an outpouring of your grace today, God. An outpouring of an extra special measure of grace today, God. That you delight in a, in a humble and contrite spirit, God. So we thank you, God, for a spirit of unity, a spirit of oneness, a spirit of faith, a spirit of hunger, a spirit of expectation, God. I thank you, God, that our hearts will be open to hear your word and the word will come forth in power. And I thank you, God, for that. Thank you, Lord, that it'll come through with your articulation, not by might and not by power, but by your spirit. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you to have your way. We exalt you, Jesus. And I thank you. We thank you for the victory of the cross. We thank you for your blood, which was shed for us. We thank you for your con compassion and your mercies, which fail not. We thank you for your loving kindness and your covenant of peace with us. Your covenant that is, is written in blood and, and the blood that's always speaking over us mercy constantly in the holy of holies in heaven. The, it, the blood is always speaking mercy, God. So we set aside all distractions. We set aside any interference, we set aside anything that may be good, but it's not you. And we set and fix our focus on the one true living God, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, son of God, son of man, healer, deliverer, baptizer, creator, Elohim, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Jireh, we will glorify you today, God, with everything that has breath. Let it glorify the Lord. And we want to give our breath unto you. For you first gave us breath. And Lord, we thank you for, I just sense the love of God. We thank you for your astounding, profound, endless, unconditional unwavering steadfast love that's immutable and that your love embodied in your precious son that you first loved us and you came for us first and you laid down your life for us God so that we could love you back so we choose today to love you with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength, with everything that's in us. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. And we bless you. And we thank you for the privilege and the honor to give you thanks and praise for your love. 
in your faithfulness. There's no one like you, Lord. So as we come into this time of worship, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for encounter with, with you. We're here for you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Who is so thankful for the Lord's faithfulness at all times? I loved when, you know, in that song where it's like, you know, you're on the road and you can't see it and you don't know which way to go and you're in the middle of the storm and you're in the middle of the trial and, you know, I'm so thankful because we've all been there, right? <laughs> Probably more than once, if we're really honest, or a lot. But one um, of the tools, and it's actually a powerful weapon that the Lord has entrusted with us, is um, gratitude and thanksgiving. When we are in the middle of those storms, and we're in the middle of those trials, and we're in the middle of the, I can't see it. I know you've promised me something, God, but I cannot see it. I don't see how it's going to work out. Everything's going the opposite direction. Is anyone tracking? <laughs> uh, everything else is screaming the opposite. And it's really loud that we can offer up to the Lord Thanksgiving. And it's, you know, sometimes we think of Thanksgiving as kind of like a, um, what can we say? just a, you know, like a protocol or something we do over a meal, which is great, but Thanksgiving is a powerhouse. Gratitude is a powerhouse. I'm using them a little bit interchangeably. So, you know, just follow um, that they are powerful weapons of warfare and they will bring down the enemy and make that path that you can't see be seen. They will make that storm stop and there'll be peace be still. That trial will be shortened and deliverance will come through through the weapons that the Lord has entrusted to us. So I just wanted to quickly recap from last week, um, just a few points. Number one, um, gratitude and thanksgiving are our reasonable response to the Lord for sending his son, Jesus, right? Yes. Number two, gratitude keeps us aware of God. And I would actually add on to that. And, and helps us not to stay so self-focused, right? <laughs> when we're thanking God, it's hard to be looking down here, right? <laughs> you can't look at your belly button when you're looking at God. So we need to just lift up our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. And it's and it, and it actually destroys yokes. It truly does. Um, we talked about the power of thanksgiving in terms of, um, I'm going to, go through some things, just recap. Thanksgiving connects you with the heart of God. We saw that with John 11, uh, 41, when Lazarus was raised from the dead. Thanksgiving brings the dead back to life and brings resurrection power. So if there are dead situations in your life, impossible situations, dreams that look like they cannot possibly happen. You know what I mean? Those things that you've kind of gone, uh, has anyone ever had a dream where you've waited so long and hopelessness is set in that you kind of just put it to the side and go, I'm really going to just put it over here. Cause it almost hurts too much. No one else. Okay. But <laughs> all right. But Thanksgiving will actually, if we start giving Thanksgiving, that will actually open up the door for resurrection life yeah. and resurrection power. Like Jesus did with Lazarus. That's right. And so, when we get into an attitude of gratitude, of thanksgiving, it creates a couple of things. One, it creates an atmosphere for God to inhabit us. Number two, when we get into thanksgiving, we're on the offense and not Amen. the defense. We enter his gates with thanksgiving, we talked about last week, and his courts with praise. But you know, when we start out our day we want to enter our day with thank you father for who you are thank you lord for who you are and we get into an attitude of thanksgiving right from the beginning and before we ever get to anything we're asking the lord for we always want to thank him for who he is amen and that sets the atmosphere for him to inhabit our presence with his presence and that's what we want the most and and never Every time you get into thanks, 
it also starts to release peace yes. in your soul. Uh, so we say, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you that you woke us up today. Thank you that you are still who you say you are. Thank you, Lord, that no matter what we have to face today, we thank you, Lord, that you are with us and that you go before us and that the battle is not mine, but the battle is the Lord's. He goes before us. So that whole attitude of gratitude, of thanks, causes the Lord's pleasure and his presence. Yeah. And whenever you're acknowledging the Lord, you're letting him know that he is absolutely the central supreme reason that you live. Yes. We live for him, but we also live by him and through him. Yes. So we are really in a position every day. And that's what Thanksgiving is. It's a reminder of our position of who we are in Christ. That's good. So Thanksgiving reminds me that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. It reminds me that I'm not my own. Yeah. It reminds me that because Christ is in me, that I am more than a conqueror. Thanksgiving reminds me of everything he says I am before I even embark in going into my day or the issues that I'm facing. So when we read that great scripture that he inhabits the praises of his people, but he says in all things, give thanks. We don't give thanks for everything. But in the middle of every situation, we have this continual attitude of gratitude, of thanks. And that thanks creates an amazing protection around our mind. Right. Amazing protection around our work and what we're going to do. And Thanksgiving releases and gives the Lord the right to invade our thoughts yeah. with his thoughts. And his ways. So those are some of the things we talked about last week. And, uh, you know, there's a lot there, but yeah, uh, we can move on to what we have for today. And yeah, uh, we can. Uh, oh, we also said a couple of things when we're in an attitude of gratitude and thanks. It keeps us out of complaining, <laughs> you know. The Bible says to do all things without complaining. So we want to. Philippians 2.14. Yeah. We want to be really, really careful uh, with our mouth, what we're saying with our words and being very, very thankful. So the more thankful we are, the less we have time to waste our words on things that aren't valuable. So we want to be people that measure our words, measure our attitudes. And stay with what the Holy Spirit and the Word of God says yeah. to give thanks for. Yeah. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks for the Lord is good and his mercy endures. Give yeah. thanks because he loves us. Give thanks because he's always there for us. That was we heard in the song today. Give thanks because he's faithful. When we're faithless, he remains faithful. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Yes. That continually cleanses us every day. Thank you, Lord, that you are protecting us all the time. Thank you, Lord, in the middle of chaos, you're still peace. Thank you, Lord, that there's no problem or situation that's too difficult for you. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Lord, for being Lord of our life. And where we're weak, you are strong. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You are there with us and for us and go before us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. you. Amen. You know, it, when you shared that this morning, this morning, um, I was, you know, what you're talking about and it, and when you do that and the Lord inhabits the praises of his people out of yeah. Psalm 22. And then um, I could sense you know, just in my prayer time that the enemy was trying to bring things in. And I heard the Lord say, and I just want to give this as a practical example. I heard the Lord say, give me Thanksgiving right now. And so I just went 
Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you. And instantly it broke instantly all that because condemnation was trying to come. And, you know, I took authority over condemnation. I'm just giving like a practical example of how this can work in our lives um, because we've all dealt with that in our personal time with the Lord. I did this wrong. I did that wrong. This one, wrong, whatever. And, and that Thanksgiving just shuts the mouth of the enemy really quickly really quickly. And you just start thanking God for who he is. And all of a sudden I felt a lifting on my mind and a clarity of thought because gratitude, grateful hearts are God focused hearts. When your heart is full of gratitude, you're God focused, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to keep going? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> Team teach. <laughs> We're teaming up. <laughs> so an attitude of gratitude acknowledges that the Lord is over every aspect of our life. And also, it causes us to recognize that he has won the victory at the cross. Yeah. And that victory is forever in front of us all the times. So Thanksgiving kind of... Uh, joggles you in your mind to keep your focus right and put it on Jesus. And the more you look at him, uh, the more you're delivered from fear, doubt, unbelief, all the things that are yeah. the enemies of thanks. Yeah. Uh, and thanks is is actually a really a, a response to all of God's love and it attacks the enemy and it attacks thoughts and it attacks anything in your body so you're saying thank you lord that by your stripes i was healed mm -hmm. thank you lord that i have the victory over this habit thank you lord that you and you alone are still in control so all those things start to put you on a up it's kind of like in sports, when you're on the offense and you know you won before you go into the game, it puts you an advantage. Yeah. And see, we That's already good. have defeat. We know Satan is defeated. We know every problem is defeated. We already know what the Lord has done for us. Therefore, it puts us on the offense. And that way, when we take up the shield of faith, when we take up the word, whatever we're doing, we're not trying to get victory. We're enforcing what God's right. already done. And that's the power of thanks. That is the power of thanks. And the converse, you know, um, I actually like this in the Passion Translation. It says, live a cheerful life. It's the same verse. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Live a cheerful life. Yeah. Without complaining or division among yourselves. I like that. Live a cheerful life. And part of that is um being grateful because when you're grateful you're cheerful right and so um hold on. <laughs> um and what what i was praying through this morning is so whereas you were talking about gratitude opens the door for the lord to come in and opens mm -hmm. up the door for all of his promises all of his blessings his presence his provision all, on and on and on it's just you know and that really is you know, even if we talk about the Lord's prayer, it opens up the door for heaven to come in. When we complain, it blocks the promises of God and opens the door for the enemy. Yeah. And we can see that with the children of Israel back in Exodus 16, right? Yeah. Because they started complaining even after the Red Sea, you know, they've been, <laughs> they've been delivered from the 10 plagues. Yeah. God's protected them from the death angel. They've walked across through the Red Sea. But then three days without food, <laughs> they don't know what yeah. they're going to do. And they start complaining and it actually blocks. Now, God has mercy on them and feeds them yeah, because that's his nature. But it blocked them from entering the promised land. That's right. And, and what thanks does also, thanks causes you to remember what God has brought you through. <laughs> thanks causes you to remember what God brought you through. And you never want to forget where God brought you from so that you can keep going for where God's taking you to. Right. And the Israelites forgot 
what God done. And then when they looked at the giants and everything else, they forgot the promises of God and they forgot what God had done for them before. So thanks is a reminder of what God has done. That's a big, big point. And, and one way to, to illustrate that is, you know, if you're in a tough situation, so let's say you're facing something like financial or physical or whatever. Thank you, Lord, that you've, that you've delivered me from sickness before. Thank you, Lord, that you've delivered me from that incurable disease before. Thank you, Lord, that you've come through with provision and that ram in the thicket when I couldn't see a way. Thank you, Lord, that you've paid off those debts. Thank you, God, that when you start thanking God and bringing those things and calling those things into remembrance, and all of a sudden there's an open pathway for heaven to invade. Yeah, that's right. And if you can't remember anything God's done for you, say, thank you, God, for whatever I can't remember. <laughs> so You can always thank God for your salvation. <laughs> so just that's the whole point. But anyway, uh, so throughout the word of God, and we'll get into some scriptures here today, of course, uh, we have this incredible uh, knowing that we can always thank the Lord for his goodness and mercy. If you don't know ever what to thank the Lord for, all through the Bible, it keeps saying, for the Lord is good and his, his mercy, mercy endures forever. Give thanks. So we can thank the Lord. So we thank the Lord for your goodness and your mercy that endures forever. Uh, we're going to go to First Chronicles 23, verse 30 for just a minute, right? Okay. <laughs> this is a melding of styles. <laughs> we're like the, what, vanilla and chocolate swirl. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> right yeah. go ahead you got you want me to read okay to stand every morning to thank and praise the lord and likewise at evening <laughs> yeah this is a uh, over in chronicles here where they're going out to battle and they have their position and their posture before the lord that every morning they thank and praise the lord and likewise at evening so that's a principle practical principle for us that every morning that's what we're supposed to do it's a lifestyle yeah so we want to get in the habit of doing that uh so we want to always every morning and before we go to bed say thank you lord for this day yeah. even at nighttime thank you lord for bringing me through the day then in the morning thank you lord for bringing me through the night mm -hmm. but but the whole it's a whole posture of thanks and uh we want to do that uh go ahead sarah you want to share with yeah so and it was so valuable to god you know david was a man after god's own heart right so we we hear about that in acts and um david raised up four thousand levites with the specific purpose to sing and play on the instruments that david had made first chronicles 23 5 then 288 priests had the assignment, the sole assignment, to, and they were specifically trained in praising the Lord every morning and every evening, according to 1 Chronicles 25, 1 through 7. So I wanted to give you some numbers just so you, for numbers people, because that's how valuable it is. It's not just like a casual thing. These people were trained up and essentially like enlisted in the choir of heaven, mm -hmm. right? To bring forth the glory of God. And that's how valuable it was. And, and you know, um, it talks about this in Jeremiah 33, 18, and there will always be Levitical priests to offer burnt offerings and grain offerings and sacrifices to me. So we know that in the new covenant, we don't have to do the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, the um, and right. the sacrifices, but we are the royal priesthood. We are the royal priesthood who out of that royalty continues to sing, continues to praise the Lord and continues to carry forth that heart of that Levitical priesthood. That's right. So we are the modern day priests. The Bible calls us the kingdom of priests. And we are, as a priest, part of our absolute responsibility or duty is to offer thanks 
It's our makeup. It's who we are. It's part of our nature. And uh, when you do that, it really pleases the Lord. You want to really get the Lord. The Lord loves us. Of course, we know that's unconditional. But pleasing the Lord actually can increase when you that's obey good. and do what he asks you to do. So we all want to please him. I know you all want to be pleasing to the Lord. Amen. And uh, when we get before him, he's going to rem remind us of the thanks we gave him. Yeah. While we were here on the earth. So don't miss your opportunity. Keep going. Yeah. We all need to do that. Uh, and the next thing we wanted to talk about is anything that tries to take our thanks from us, any high thought that comes against us, we have a responsibility to make a deliberate decision not to complain, not to be like the Israelites, but to be thankful continually. That's our decision. And Sarah brought this point out about Jesus never complained. Even when he went to Gethsemane, when he went to the cross, all the things that he could have complained about, he never did. The Bible says he never opened his mouth to complain, mm -hmm. but he always had an attitude of thanks and even through the pain and through the suffering, mm -hmm. he said, oh, the joy that is set before me. Right. Looking at us. So he was able to keep those thoughts away that probably came. And he says the same way I did it, you can do it. And so we need to keep our thoughts so filled with thanks. And it keeps us the darkness away. Keeps us walking in the light. Yeah. In the light. And so you think about that with Jesus 40 days in the wilderness without food, right? And so he's fasting. There are and he's led there by the spirit. There are demons all around, right? You know, the angels came to minister to him. But most of us, after like, you know, the first half an hour would have been like, Lord, why did you bring me here? Yeah. Uh, realistically. And then we see Jesus being beaten, scourged carrying the cross, being in the garden of Gethsemane, even with his disciples who didn't get it and who betrayed him, he never complained. Instead, he restored. Amen. And that's one of the great examples for all of us. And uh, we really, really have a lot to be thankful for today. So thank you, Lord, for that example. And yes, thank Lord. you, Lord. We don't go through anywhere near the pain or the suffering that you did. And we are so thankful for what you did for us. Thank you for taking our place. Thank you for all the pain you, and the suffering you went through and the love you've shown us. Thank you, Lord. We are so thankful, Lord, and help us never to take for granted what you did for us. And that when we're going through a trial or a problem or a test, Yes, Lord. Help us to have that same attitude that you did. And thanks to keep our eyes focused the way they should be. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And one one key is start with the small things. You know, you don't wait to give Thanksgiving yeah. until you like, you know, there was a physical thing that we were walking through. And so we're we're going to give thanks every step of the way. Do you know what I mean? If that means that the big toe is moving, glory to God that the big toe is moving. No, seriously, glory to God for those. And if you keep giving thanks along those things, it'll actually accelerate the process yeah. because Thanksgiving is just, it's the language of heaven. It's the presence of heaven. It's the, it's the, it's the actually bringing the the word of God, Jesus Christ himself into, because really he was the, he was the offering. He was the yeah. Thanksgiving offering. Yeah. And, and Thanksgiving is not only the language of heaven, it's a weapon. It really is a weapon for against thought lives, against the enemy. Uh, and these are basic things we all know, but when you go, when you study Thanksgiving through scripture, it is very powerful. Because that's why it says in all things, give thanks, yeah. continually giving thanks. So Thanksgiving is such a powerful, powerful tool mm -hmm. that we need to really use and bring about in everyday life. Because it's so easy to get 
caught up in all the affairs of life and forget thanks. Mm -hmm. So thanks is a very, very important. So and David really modeled that in the Psalms. Yeah. I mean, he had people trying to assassinate him yeah. regularly. You know, he had armies encamped around him, Psalm 27, constantly. He was hiding out in caves. He was, you know, he was so desperate for food. He went into the temple for the showbread. I mean, he, all these different, th all these different things are yeah. into the, you know, tabernacle. He went into the, there for the showbread. And the point is in all of it, he said, and I thank you, God. He always wound up whatever the psalm it was, giving praise and thanksgiving, mm -hmm. even as he laid out, you know, the situation before the Lord. He didn't mince words with the Lord, no. but he always wound up in thanksgiving. Yeah, David, huge example of thanksgiving through all that. And when you read the psalms, there it's just loaded with examples of thanks for, that David did. And so that's good. Another thing that uh, we wanted to talk about today, and we're going to try to get through these. There's so much. <laughs> Gratitude, write this down, releases God's love into situations. Gratitude releases God's love into situations. Uh, now, the Bible says that we're loved by God unconditionally. We know that. But whenever you offer thanks it releases that love amen from your spirit man up into your soul and into your feelings and into your emotions and it causes us to have a sense that not only are we loved by god but that god loves us unconditionally no matter where we are or what we've done and the bible says the love of god has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And whenever we are in thanks, it's a reminder that God's love is being released in every situation we're in. Uh, in Romans 5.5, 5, we can put that one up. And we thank God for Kiana, who is fast on her feet with the scriptures and always willing to flow. So we thank God for her. Go ahead. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. So hope does not disappoint. Now, one of the definitions for hope is a joyful uh, anticipation or an expectation of good. And so we know that God's hope is different than the world's hope. God always has something that we can have ex expectation for that somehow something good is going to come out of a situation. Yeah. So when we say, thank you, Lord, that we have hope today. Yeah. That we can expect something good is going to come out of this situation, even though we don't understand it. Yeah. So thanks creates that incredible anticipation of somehow, some way, good's going to come out. Yes. And, uh, so we are all filled with God's goodness when we're born again. We're all filled with his love. We grow in all of that as we learn about it, but it's already there. We don't have to go get it. We already have it. So say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your love is already in me. Your love is already in me. Thank you, Lord. Thank Hope you, Lord. Is already in me. Hope is already in me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Goodness. Goodness. Is already in me. Is already in me. And thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord. All the fruit of the Spirit. All the fruit of the Spirit. Is already in me. Is already in me. And as I learn of it. And I learn as I learn of it. It becomes. It becomes. Part of my thinking. Part of my thinking. And part of my expression. And part of my expression. And when I give thanks. And when I give thanks. I'm reminding myself. I'm reminding myself. Of everything. Of everything. I already have. I already have. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we want to say praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And uh, whenever you give thanks as well, it causes, the Bible says, out of our belly shall flow rivers right. of living water. So it refreshes your soul. 
Yeah. Thanks is thanks is kind of like uh, I could say it like this: you're if you're at a well and your spirit is the well mm -hmm. and it's filled with water. Mm -hmm. When you give thanks, it's like you're taking your the dipper of the ladle and you're going down in. That's why I say it's well. Yeah, and bringing up the water mm -hmm. to your mouth, which in this case would be your mind, and refreshing it. Yeah. Well, and it talks about that, like what you're saying in um, Isaiah 35, which is then, you know, a prophetic picture of Jesus, that it talks about in the desert places that yeah. like the rose will blossom. Well, roses don't blossom in less water. So sometimes our souls can feel parched and dry. You know what I mean? If we haven't been in the presence of God or, yeah. you know, and so then as we start thanking God out of that that water just rushes through yeah. and instead of all that barrenness it talks about this in isaiah 35 that um that those parched places become streams of waters yeah in the wilderness right. so in those wilderness places like we talked about when you can't see it when you're going through a storm when you're when you're feeling worn out overwhelmed overstretched whatever that you start giving thanks and those parched places have to go. Yeah. Because the water of life comes through Jesus Amen. Christ himself. Yeah. And so that whole attitude of gratitude and thanks is a gateway to open up the river of love <laughs> and life. Amen. Amen. And it will <laughs> keep you going. So, yeah, there we go. So, <laughs> so we all have to ask ourselves, what are we doing with the love of God that's been freely given to us? Yeah. So we don't want to reject it. We want to count it as valuable, not because just God loves us so that we can love others. Yeah. There should be an overflow. Like when you're filled up with God, yeah. you should overflow. Like it talks about in Ephesians 5. Yeah. With Over songs and songs and, 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 you know. Spiritual songs. <laughs> ideas things you come up with to share encouragement. with people yeah thanks opens up all those ingredients yeah it really does thanks reminds you how beautiful god is how beautiful his love is how beautiful his creation is and how beautiful his people are yeah that's a big that and that can be a big testing place for all of us <laughs> right sometimes people can you know we don't fight against flesh and blood but sometimes situations with people can be a big testing place but when we start yeah. to enter into thanksgiving and you know there have been situations where um you know i've been hurt or you've been hurt or whatever and we've had to make a deliberate decision to sit down and give thanks for the good well that's a whole big thing i was going to get into too sorry the bible says that we are to love our enemies which is totally not natural but the only way you can love your enemy is not because of what your enemy did to you. What you have to do is you have to love what God can do to them when you choose not to let their hurt victimize you because you choose to say, Lord, even though they hurt me, you don't deny the hurt. Thank you, Lord, that despite what they did to me, you're greater yeah. than that. And I thank you that you will not allow this hurt to take on a root of bitterness, a root of unforgiveness. I will not permit that. So thank you, Lord, the same way you forgave me, I forgive them. And you can't forgive them in your natural, logical strength. You can only give them through the love of God and through thankfulness. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Lord. That even though they hurt me, what was meant for evil by them, mm -hmm. I believe that somehow you're going to turn it for good. Just like you did for Joseph. Right. You'll do it for me. And that's not an easy thing to do. But it's a process of learning. Whenever we're in difficult situations with people, we have to really remember that God loves that person that hurts us. Yeah. Secondly, we have to see that person the way God does. Because if we look at them through our own eyes, 
we will never ever get free of what they did to us. Right. So it takes a supernatural divine intervention of thankfulness, praise, and the goodness of God that leads to healing. Yeah. So here's the question. Is there anything good that we can see out of when somebody hurts us? Probably not. But what we can see is this. Lord, we choose to give them over to you. Mm -hmm. And we release them to you because only you can help us to forgive or release or bless them. Because the Bible says not only to forgive your enemies, but to bless them. Amen. And do good to them. Right. Which is totally not natural. Right. So it's a real choice mm -hmm. to be thankful, to release, to forgive, to bless, and see what God wants us to see in somebody. Yeah. So it's a, it's a learning process. And usually... I mean, not exclusively, but usually some of the toughest places that we've experienced it are in our own families, right? You know, it says husbands do not be better to your wives. That's in the Bible for a reason, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, but, but those, because the Lord was aware of that. And then with that, and, you know, then it talks about, you know, how we're to be compassionate with one another, first Peter three. And that is really coming into a place and it, it's it's not natural <laughs> you know what i mean it's totally not natural but it takes an act and a deliberate choice to say i'm going to submit and choose to humble myself before god rather than exalt myself in pride you know there's if you want to know about pride read proverbs <laughs> yeah. but you know there aren't a lot of good things that come from that but really if when we choose to hang on to bitterness and we've all walked through this you oh, know yeah. what i mean that that we start to get into a posture in our heart of pride rather than praise and we start to get into a posture in our heart of judgment rather than joy right right and and we can know that even with the most wicked person we don't fight against flesh and blood they are still made in the image and likeness of god whether or not we like them we don't like them they've done us wrong they are still made in the image and likeness of god that is still a truth scripturally so yeah. there's got to be something good because god is good amen yeah and you know all through life the challenges we have uh probably the biggest ones are people <laughs> so, but, uh, but God already knew that and he prepared <laughs> us to deal with it but and the hardest thing is when somebody really does us wrong yeah we have a tendency to be filled with that wrong in our thought life and the scripture says we're to meditate on the word but we start to meditate on the wrong that was done and then it just makes it worse and worse and worse. And next thing you know, it just takes you down to a path of that. Eventually, you confront the truth. That doesn't mean that what somebody did to you was right. And the Bible says if somebody has hurt you, that you would go to them and let them know that. But go in an attitude of gratitude, saying, I remember what God's forgiven me from. Mm -hmm. So as I go in there to speak to this person, I want to go in with the same way he forgave me, forgive them. And then what you want to do, say, thank you, Lord, for this person. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy what they did to me, but I know you love them. And I thank you that you're going to turn this out for good somehow, some way. Yeah. I don't know, but thank yeah. you, Lord. And, and pray about the timing of it too, because God sometimes works on people's hearts and you, you just want to use wisdom in, in how you approach the situation. Amen. All right. So let's move on to our next one here, 
We we have uh, 15 pages. Minutes. <laughs> we're on page seven. <laughs> so we're <laughs> 11, 13 already. <laughs> Point seven. <laughs> Point seven. Gratitude releases God's provision in this situation. Yes, it does. And this is a fantastic uh, truth and principle. When we remember God is our source for all things, then we can continue to praise and thank him for his provision. So gratitude opens the gateway for provision, multiplication, and supply. Now, remember last week, we always want to use examples of Jesus. <laughs> and remember the illustration. They came to Jesus with the five loaves and it's uh, five fish. I guess it was it five loaves or two fish. Five, five loaves, two fish. That's right. It's harder to get fish than bread. Right. Five <laughs> loaves and two fish. All right. And what did Jesus do? The first thing he did is he turned around. There was a big crowd out there. Some say 10, 15,000 people. Well, how are you going to feed 15,000 people with five loaves and two fish? You can't in the natural. Right. But he looks right to the Father because Jesus did everything according to what the Father would tell him. Say, Father, I give you thanks for this. And he blessed it. Yeah. And as soon as he did, it multiplied. So before you ever give anything, give thanks first. Yes. Bless the Father. Yes. And then he'll multiply it. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that you give seed to the sower. Amen. And then speak over that seed, whatever it is, whatever it is. It doesn't, you know, it can be financial, it can be a cake, it can be whatever. It doesn't matter. But you just start speaking over those things, speaking over yeah. those things, multiply, increase. And you'll find out that, you know, what you sow you'll start having like if you sow cakes you will have cakes at your front door <laughs> like it, right. god will do that but the key <laughs> the key is doing it with an attitude of thanks because yeah. it's Lord, joyful everything i have comes from your hand yeah and whatever you ask me to do with it i do it joyfully and thank you for the honor and the privilege to take what is yours and sow it out yeah and he loves that and his presence comes on it yep and he multiplies it not only I always say you don't give to get from God. You give to give. You do. You give to get more to give with. Yeah. And there's never an ending supply because you keep giving and you give back and you keep giving. Yeah. That's the cycle of God. Yeah. And the beauty of it is, you know, sometimes we can take something as simple as like a cake and it just opens someone's heart who may be hurting. Yeah. And that's really beautiful. Like that is it's just such a beautiful thing that we can take something so small you know what I mean? In in the economy of God and give it and, and bless someone with it. And it talks about that in uh, second Corinthians nine, um, nine verses nine through 10. It'll uh, that, that, that then that person will abound with thanksgiving to God. Well, why did you do this? You say, well, you know, God put it on my heart. And I just sense that, you know, he loved you and wanted to bless you or yeah. however you say it in your language. And, yeah. and people go, wow. And then all of a sudden you'll be in a conversation and God will just open up doors and it's not even about the cake. I mean, I know we're on provision now, but the greatest and the highest thing is, is the people that it touches. Yeah. That's the highest level is the provision to access the people. And that is such an honor to even have a seed to sow, to bless someone with who's in need or who's in want or I the Lord says he especially loves it when we give to those who can't give back to us. And he rewards us for that. So well, we'll get to that. Okay. But but uh, <laughs> that's what that's on the 14th page. <laughs> but that's great. But let's uh you study see, to show yourself approved. <laughs> we have a powerful illustration here. Let's look at first chronicles when David Takes the offering for the temple. Take, take a look at this. It's one of my First, favorite. First Chronicles 29, 10 to 14. There's no greater giver in the Bible, probably than David. Uh, 
he's just a fantastic praiser, worshiper, but he was also an amazing giver. Uh, let's read that, sir. Starting with verse 10. Therefore, David blessed the Lord before all the assembly. And David said, blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our father forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are Let's exalted. Right there. So, so right away, David acknowledges, first of all, he blesses the Lord. Then he tells the father who he is. And thirdly, he goes on to say, not only about his greatness, but he also makes it very clear that everything is his. Yes. We don't own anything. Okay, go ahead. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, O oh God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you and of your own we have given you. Wow. So there, everything David says there, all is all about the Lord and less about him. It, yeah. It's all about doesn't have to it's all yours what a privilege lord i just get to be the delivery boy mm -hmm. you know you you own everything you you own the whole plan you own the whole everything i just get to be able to give it because of you and so some people say this was a huge offering i don't know how sarah says four billion that's what I found in my research, $4 billion. That they gave $4 billion. That was what I found in my research. I, I didn't do the calculations myself, but in my research, that's what I found. Whew. But that was probably the biggest offering. And they said, the people rejoiced for they offered willingly because with a loyal heart, they had offered willingly to the Lord. And King David also rejoiced greatly. Yeah. So the every, it's a rejoicing. They're, they, they're the cheerful givers, you know, and I, and, um, going to share something with this um with all this one thing that I, I is remarkable about david is so god has already said to david you're not going to build me that you're not going to build me the temple right mm -hmm. and your son solomon will build me the temple but despite not being able to build it himself the fact that he gets to participate and leave that legacy and he's still honoring God like that. He recognizes what a privilege it is to give back to God for he first gave to him. And he re and he remembers, because if you go through um, in in different throughout Chronicles, he, he says, you've carried, you've taken me from a shepherd boy. And now you've made me ruler over this. Who am I to deserve all this? He has, I think it's first Chronicles seven. But he has this revelation of gratitude all throughout. And he doesn't even, he's king, but he doesn't even need to be like, have his placard on the town, any of that stuff. He's just so excited to do it onto the Lord. That's right. So that's that's the whole thing. And it's, it's a powerful, powerful revelation when you give with thanks. Yeah. Whenever you give uh, financially, uh, whatever it is. Just keep that attitude of gratitude. Uh, and that's the way David was. And he's a great example for that. Um, I think sometimes people that aren't grateful uh, forget that everything they have comes from God. And I always tell people, if you can't be a giver, then you're missing out on a part that God made you to be like. Your nature, which is God's nature, is to be a giver. Amen. It's it's already in you. It's already in me. So it should be just an absolute supernatural expression. Amen. It doesn't have to be worked up or anything. It just flows. You just listen to the Holy Spirit. Where do you want me to give? Not if I should. Not if. It's mm -hmm. where. Mm -hmm. Or when. So in the scriptures, 
there's different things God tells us to do, to do tithes, offerings, alms, all these different things are there. And first fruits. To show us how to give Mm -hmm. because he wants the best for us. All right. Number eight, gratitude releases God's deliverance into situations. Come on. Gratitude releases God's deliverance into situations. Second Corinthians 1, 9, and 10. Let's put that one up there. Are you laughing at me? No, I'm just laughing because. (laughs) No, that's okay. (laughs) Go ahead. Yes, we have the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. Amen. So you can share with her. So with this, Paul Paulson is talking about his release and rescue from um by God's power in asia you know and one of the words for deliver and deliver is we'll work on my greek rurumai which means to rush or draw for oneself it means to rescue out of like we think about that in um psalm 18 where it talks about he delivered me out of uh, deep waters and um it's eight 18 times in the new testament but the point is you're throughout all of this and we can go to um you remember in Acts, let's go to this, Acts 16, 25 through 26. So remember the man of Macedonia encounters Paul in the middle of the night and redirects his path. And so Paul and Silas, Paul's following the Lord, but, and then he's, he is thrown into the stocks. He's beaten. Um, You know, he's actually been following God. Yeah, he's been obedient to God and he's thrown into the stocks into an inner prison with chains on his feet. He's in excruciating pain. He's suffering. And this is what happens. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. So they start praying, singing hymns to God. There's thanksgiving in there. They're thanking God in the middle of the pain, offering up that sacrifice of praise that we talked about last week. And um, they you they had to make a choice because I can't even fathom what they were enduring at that point, physically, emotionally. And they chose not to get upset with God, but they chose to thank God and praise God. And it became a witness to those all around them as the presence of God filled that inner prison, which became a holy of holies. And out of that, the Lord divinely intervened with the great earthquake. The prison doors are open. None of the prisoners leave, which is a miracle too, because they're so captivated by the presence of God. And they can see that this is a direct response to Paul and Silas's prayers. So, I mean, usually when prison doors open, prisoners run, (laughs) but these prisoners stay because of the presence of God. And we can see that God is, that Paul, as we said in the other scripture, is giving God thanks for his delivering power. But it was Paul's thanks, Paul and Silas's thanksgiving that opens up the way for his delivering power. We talked about that last week with Jonah, how when Jonah offered up thanksgiving, he was delivered out of the mouth of the whale. So when we ever, so the point is when we feel weak and we start praising God and we start offering up songs of deliverance, like talked about in Psalm 32, it opens up the pathway for God to deliver you out of impossible situations with his miracle power amen and if he did it then he can do it now amen and it's an example to others when they see you in the midst of a problem it causes them to go wow whatever you're believing in this guy he must be something yeah because i don't know how you'll be able to 
get through that situation and still have an attitude of thanks and all. So that's what these prisoners saw. Yeah. They didn't want to leave. They want to say, whatever you've got, we want part of that. Yeah. So it was a witness. All right. That's good. Number nine. Gratitude helps us see the good in the midst of hardship. So in every circumstance, we know that God can help us. So we all know that great verse in Romans 8, 28, 29, that all things work together for good for those who love God, that are called according to his purpose. But thanking the Lord in difficult hardship times focuses our attention on him rather than our circumstance. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that because we've done this all before. But, but when you thank the Lord, your circumstance is put in proper perspective. We realize our God is greater and bigger than our problem. If we focus on the problem, then the problem becomes bigger than what we know that it should be. Right. So then we get weary and worn out and worried and stressed out. So the more we thank God, the more our eyesight's changed, the more we see things the way God does. Number 10, Thanksgiving, I love this, helps release anxiety and causes us to walk in peace. Let's look at Philippians 4, 6 and 7. <laughs> you don't have to get through all that. Yeah. What? You might not get through all that. We won't. <laughs> Go on the best I can. <laughs> Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Over to teach. <laughs> my prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. <laughs> and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> this verse is very familiar to all of us. But the key to this whole verse is by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So thanksgiving, whenever you have a request to God, before we ask God for something, we thank him that he already will supply what we're asking for. Yeah. As long as we know it's in his will, that's what we're doing. So whenever we feel anxious about a situation or we're not sure we're getting angry or whatever by staying in thanksgiving it keeps us out of anger keeps it out of frustration and brings peace as a result thanksgiving uh releases peace in our soul thanksgiving means that we know god's doing something even if we don't understand what he's doing and that brings peace yeah in, that's what peace is in the passion translation i i love this don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing be saturated in prayer throughout each day offering your faith-filled request before god with overflowing gratitude tell him every detail of your life is that great yeah so as we're and i love that because a lot of times anxiety is related to when we feel pulled in a bunch of different directions and we feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. by things but but as we're saturated in prayer, faithful requests, and overflowing gratitude. He just invades all of that. Yeah. And he loves hearing every detail. He loves it. He wants to hear the details. Yeah, that's right. That's true intimacy. Amen. Right? Totally. I mean, I like when I talk to you, I tell you probably more details than you want, but I tell you all the details about every, you know, but that's what part of the relationship is. You know, and, and the Lord is to be our husband. So you tell him all the details. <laughs> yeah, and the Lord, he likes to listen to it. <laughs> but if you're doing it with the right attitude, it just makes everything so much better. Yeah. All right. Moving right along. Thanksgiving. <laughs> we talked about this earlier, but just we're just making little bullet points that you can write down so you have a reference. Thanksgiving is our nature, our lifestyle, and God's will. Thanksgiving is our nature, our lifestyle, and God's will. So God's will for our lives, we know, as we've been talking for the last two weeks, 
is to give thanks. Let's go in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, one of the most uh, I foundational love this. verses I of, love this. for thanks. Yeah. Rejoice always, pray without ce ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Yeah, so whenever we're in a situation that's difficult or a hardship, like we just talked about. We don't thank God for the hardship. We thank God in the hardship. That yeah. We have a, a privilege and an opportunity to give God thanks that we normally wouldn't have. Yeah. And therefore, that releases his nature into our situation and makes us more like him. And the hardship makes us more like him if we stay in an attitude of thanksgiving. Yeah. And that's what he's saying here. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. Then pray without ceasing and rejoice. One of the words for rejoice means to brighten up. <laughs> so whenever I rejoice, I'm brighten up. I brighten up things. Yeah, that's good. And so uh, we want to be people that shine with his brightness mm -hmm. and whenever you're rejoicing whenever you are going through a difficult time it brightens the situation up it does it sheds a light on it it brings his presence so thanksgiving uh causes us to always remember that no matter where we are or what we're in not only is God present, but he will brighten it up to where we can't brighten it in ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, we said earlier, and we have it here in the notes, that David, who was a man after God's own heart, was always exuberant in his thanksgiving. And, you know, one thing I will say, too, about this before we uh, finish out today is, and we should mention this, that when you give thanks and praise, not only does God inhabit our praise, he actually releases angels yes. into your situation. Angels encamp around those who thank the Lord, fear the Lord. I've always felt this too. Whenever you give a tithe or an offering, they do. Angels come around when you do that. They do. And then they bless you and bring stuff back to you. They do. So that's really part of that. And then uh, what we want to talk about too before we finish this, let's go to Colossians 3 17. <laughs> I have something to share out of Revelation. Yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah. Oh, you want to share before that? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. And we want to just say, again, this is a great verse. Whatever we do in any situation, wherever we are, we can't maintain that thanks. Okay, what were you going to share? Well, and part of the reason, you know, the rationale why. So we saw this with, in David, we see it in the Lord's Prayer about, um, you know, giving God the Father glory, like letting heaven come to earth, right? So if we go into the book of Revelation, it's really important. And we talked about the language of heaven, but I want to bring this out because when we start joining in with heaven, which we're called to do, we saw David do it. We saw Jesus model it, you know, when he asked how to pray and we see it. Um, and it talks about, you know, that there are nations and tribes and people and tongues standing before the throne of the lamb. So we're in heaven. Now this is when John gets taken up and they're crying out with a loud voice saying salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. Listen, and all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, amen. 
blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. And so as we start to give thanksgiving, we are joining with the internal heavenly song of the angelic host Amen. around the throne of heaven. And that will bring heaven right onto earth. So whatever the situation is, heaven is greater than that. So you could say it like this. What you're doing here is going to continue there. Yes. So practice now and you'll get rewarded there and continue it there. So we're already in rehearsal. We're in rehearsal, but it's so powerful that they fall on their faces before the throne. And, you know, that's and and so as we can carry that over, because we may not be able to fall on our faces before the throne, we yeah. can, you know, go prostrate. But in terms of a posture of the heart yeah. that we can yield our heart and submit and surrender our heart in thanksgiving up to God yeah. and really enter into that heavenly course. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's powerful. And so. We can see from that verse, Thanksgiving is also central to our prayer life. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we pray, we give, we pray always with thanks. Uh, and we always want to remember that. So we always want to finish this out with something powerful. Let's go to our 12th point. <laughs> Overflow <We're> just... <laughs> of Thanksgiving is joy. Would you write that down? The overflow of thanksgiving <laughs> is joy. So I will finish with this right here. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah, this is good. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so every one of us, when we rejoice and we give thanks, it releases joy in our life. Yeah. And joy is a powerful powerful force uh, and uh, let's take a look at this first rejoice always is the byproduct of thanks mm -hmm. when I'm thankful I'm always rejoicing and a grateful attitude always brings forth joy yes and then, Shana, joy unspeakable and full of glory and then the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we see the power of thanksgiving to energize us when we're weak. Yeah. And we start offering up thanksgiving because then we enter into the heavenly chorus. Amen. And and we want to say to everybody, we have a privilege and an honor. And of course, at this time of the year, we just celebrated Thanksgiving. Everybody's in this mode of love and giving, which is good. But we want to maintain that all year round. Right. That's the whole point that God's trying to bring out. Uh, and remember, we talked about loving your enemies today. We talked about Jesus talked about. I guess we should really share this one section of scripture with Luke 12. Uh, 14. 14. 14, 12 to 14. Before we finish today, let's do this one last thing here. Read that. Then he said to them who invited him, when you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Yeah, so here the Lord's letting us know that when he spoke this, he said, always have an attitude of thanksgiving when you give. And when you give, give with joy. Because when we give, we give out of incredible joy because of the love God's shown us. We are so thankful for everything we have. Praise what God. a privilege to give it out to those around us. Yeah. Amen. So there's our message for today. And, and with all this, that there's... That they're actually, you know, as, as we continue to grow in generosity and grow in gratitude that, you know, because out of gener out of gratitude and overflows generosity, yeah. because what, what can I render to the Lord for all that he's given to me, right? So that's an overflow. And 
we, regardless of how people respond, as it talks about in Luke six, about, you know, your enemies or people may not thank you. It talks about that in last, in the last days. However, God sees it. God will repay you. And, and God looks at it and he delights in a cheerful giver. So as we go, go out into the holiday season, let's be people who look out for people that can't repay us, that we can just give to people even anonymously or without, you know, thinking, what am I going to get back from them? That we can just give with a joyful heart, even if, you know, you put a little bag on someone's stoop and they never know it's from you or whatever that looks like in your life, that we can be people who do that because as we do it, we do it onto Jesus. Amen. And we remember we remember his goodness to us. Yeah, what a privilege. What an honor. So we say, all right, so we thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for this word. Thank you for everybody that came on today and that will watch this this week. And we just bless you and thank you for each one of them. Thank you for their hearts. Thank you for their desire to be people that are people of thanks. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that as they heard the message today, and heard your word, that it will remain in them and grow in them. And we say, praise you, Lord, for each one of them. And we honor you for each one of them and thank you for their lives. Thank you for their faithfulness to you. And whatever they're going through today, thank we you. thank you, Lord, no matter what it is, that you're working all things to good for those because they love you and they're called according to your purpose. Let your anointing and your presence and your peace flow into every person today. And let them just continue in this season we are in to honor you with thanks. And as they grow and just get greater revelation and study this out themselves, we just praise you and thank you that you will continue to build them in everything that you've called them to be, everything that you've called them to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And for some of you, I just saw um, some, I just, uh, command all weariness to go um for some of you that have been fighting weariness we just command weariness to go and we release the strength and the joy of the lord over you that the joy of the lord is your strength and i just um i saw um a picture of strength just coming into like the sinews of your body like it talks about in ezekiel and strength coming into your muscles that some of you have felt like physically weak so i just release the strength of god the strength of god in and through each and every one of you. And I just thank you, God, for that. That weariness, heaviness is broken today. All oppression goes in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, for that. And I thank you, God, even as we enter this time of holiday season, um, we just uh, break off any unjust yokes. And I thank you, God, that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So thank you for giving us wisdom on how to walk through this season, keeping your eyes on you filled with you and filled with your joy in jesus name we pray amen amen well amen thank you for coming on everybody Wait. today and we're going to share with you uh, as we always do before we do our giving uh where we sowed last week so we wanted to um we prayed and <laughs> we sensed um to give to a food bank because we wanted to make sure that um People had food for Thanksgiving. Yeah. We felt very strongly about that. So we sowed to the Community Food Bank of, I think it's New Jersey. Um, it has like the orange. Anyway, but we wanted to make sure that people who didn't have money for Thanksgiving were able to have a meal, a hot meal. Um, we believe in that. And, um, you know, it goes along with what we were talking about in Luke 14, yeah. that we don't expect to pay back, that we wanted to do it onto the Lord. So um, we... We offered that up to the Lord and yeah. thanked God for the privilege to be able to sow. Yeah. And yeah. So we've been doing a lot of giving to Israel lately as well. Uh, and the children over there, situations in there for the last three weeks. And of course, this week, because of Thanksgiving, we fed it people. And we just want to say every week we are so thankful because of your giving and the Lord's supply. And as we give out, we always give out. What you give in, we give out. Our goal is to be people that sow continually. Yes. To help the needs of many people locally and globally. 
and uh, we've got it a privilege and an honor to do that for yes. your giving. And so you just need to know that your giving is being used to touch many, many lives. Many, many, many lives. Sometimes I see the statistics when uh, I'm putting in the information about how many different lives it's going to, and it's astounding. So I just want to really encourage you guys about the lives that you're touching that, you know, it's a double portion seed. And so to have an expectation for double portion and beyond personally, Mm -hmm. really. Um, And we do that um, not just for us, but on your behalf, because we want to represent God rightly and be good stewards of um, what, what he's entrusted on your behalf to that you, that you all get the maximum harvest as well. And you will. Hallelujah. Yeah. So if you want to do uh, a tithe or an offering, whatever you sense today, if you want to give an offering of thanks. Yes. If you want to sow something into an offering that we can continue to sow somewhere, uh, we will. So you can give online or text to give, whatever you choose to do. And we will definitely thank the Lord for that giving and thank you for your faithful support. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all that you are and all that you're doing. Also, thank you for your prayers for us. We're praying for you. And uh, I'm glad I could be on here again today. Who's excited about Pastor Dan teaching? Come on, Jesus. Praise God. I'm working on it. (laughs) Praise God. Trying to get back to going here. You're on your way. You're on your way. But we'll get there. Day by day on your way. Hallelujah, right? And we want to thank you for your prayers. Please hold fast. We are praying for you. And so we're thankful. And speaking of prayers, prayer meeting this Wednesday. Um, So please, if you can make it, uh, we would love for you to come. If not, please pray anyway. Uh, If you have any questions, you can contact Kiana. Um, She just sends out a text. Um, So we're excited to come and pray and seek the Lord while he may be found. Isaiah 55. Amen. And uh, so we're very, very thankful. And as we get ready to leave today, we just want to say to all of you, may the Lord bless you, keep you, may his face shine upon you and be with you. And uh, as we get ready for the upcoming weeks, we uh, will be sharing some exciting things with you of what we feel God's planning to do with Unite and with all of you. Yeah. And uh, wherever you're going to be today, have an amazing day and God be with you. Yes. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And we got, we see great things up ahead for all of us. We do. God bless you. God bless you. We love you guys. Thank you for praying. We love you and we'll see you next week.